This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Right now at 6 o'clock on Good Morning Indiana. Firefighters risk their lives every day to protect our communities. This morning, we're showing you a first-of-its-kind program helping heroes detect cancer risks early. Holiday packages are on the way, and the crooks are on the prowl. Working for you, we are taking a look at ways you can prevent items from being swiped from your doorstep. And with the holidays right around the corner, you could be looking to make some extra cash. We're breaking down what you need to know to land the perfect job. A treatment facility hoping to open in Morgan County is facing backlash. Why neighbors say they're concerned about the possible addition to their neighborhood. And a man rents a U-Haul for a short move, then receives a bill for hundreds of dollars. We're breaking down the hidden fees so you don't waste your money. We are on the move on this new week. It is Monday, November the 4th. Welcome to Good Morning Indiana. Yeah, we hope you had a great weekend, but we're diving headfirst into mm -hmm. a brand new work week, and so we've got to talk about the weather. Yeah, meteorologist Todd Clausen is standing by right now. Todd, what can people expect as they head out today? You know, it was a quiet weekend, and we're carrying that nice quiet weather into the weekday here as we start off your Monday. So no issues whatsoever as you get going and you get out the door this morning. I checked the sunglasses here. You'll have a little bit of sunshine to start the day. Uh, but then we'll kind of lose that sunshine. So you definitely don't need the sunglasses from start to finish today. And then the medium weight jacket as temperatures here this morning are kind of hovering in the, the low 40s across the area. And that's really where they stay through the 8 o'clock hour with skies uh, that'll be mostly cloudy. And again, the sunrise now is a little after 7 o'clock with the time change. So the skies will be brightening up already by the time we get to 8 o'clock. So here's the cloud cover. A few showers in northern Indiana. They will not impact us here throughout the morning drive. The further south you are, the better opportunity you have for some sunshine here throughout the day. But there is a front that is off to our west, and that is going to come through later on this evening with the possibility of a few very, very light rain showers. But your morning hours will be completely dry. Temperatures warm from the 40s into the low 50s already by the noon hour with a bit of a breeze that is going to kick in. We'll talk about the rest of today and look ahead to the rest of the week coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Todd, thanks so much. We do have a good update for for you here at six o'clock. This is all back open over here on the west side. We had an overturned semi on the ramp from northbound I-465 to westbound I-74. No one was hurt in that crash, but it had been a cleanup that we've been following since about 2.30 this morning. Everything again is clear and back open in that area. For now, we do want to take a look over at another issue I've been monitoring, a water main break here on the northeast side, East 34th Street between Hawthorne Lane and Arlington Avenue. Watch out for that if you're traveling on the northeast side. Here at 603, many of us will be getting into the giving mood soon with the holidays right around the corner, but that also means that some crooks will be looking to take your packages. It already happened to one man. This was on the northwest side. The man's doorbell camera alerted him of a delivery of a package that he had been waiting on. A little later that day, it alerted him again that someone was at his door. You see him there. Well, his camera captured that person walking up to his door, waiting, and then taking off with with that package. Uh, it made me upset. Um, I was frustrated that somebody just decided they could just walk up on somebody's front porch and take someone else's things. Not very cool. Well, IMPD has shared tips with RTV6 in the past to protect your orders. So they say you can ask to sign for a package on delivery, buy insurance for any expensive items, have packages delivered to your workplace. You can also track your package delivery online or have a trusted neighbor pick it up. They say to be sure to have the post office hold deliveries when you head out of town. And there's opposition to a proposed treatment center in Morgan County. Addiction Rehab Centers wants to open a new residential facility on 14 acres of land off of Man Road in Mooresville. Uh, patients dealing with depression, anxiety, and substance abuse disorders would receive treatment at that facility. The location is just over a mile away from North Madison Elementary School that has some parents concerned. Even if I wasn't in this community or involved, I would, if I was watching this on the news, I'd be shaking my head at it because what about the people that have to live around there? Their kids aren't gonna be able to play out in their yards anymore. Here's the other side. A spokesman for Addiction Rehab Center says the facility is voluntary. It does not accept sex offenders and has a strong vetting process. And the spokesperson says the facility chose this location because of a lack of services 
in the area. The 2019 municipal election is tomorrow. Early voting wrapped up on Sunday at the four Marion County satellite centers. But you can still cast an early vote at the county clerk's office until noon today. Again, this is a municipal election, meaning you'll be casting votes for mayor of Indianapolis along with council races and some school referendums. Polls are open across the Hoosier State tomorrow from 6 a.m. until 6 p.m. Well, two people have died following a crash involving a horse-drawn carriage out in Park County. The crash happened early Saturday morning on US 36 near Raccoon Lake Bridge. Deputies say a Danville man hit the buggy carrying an Amish family from behind. One person was pronounced dead at that scene. Another person died at a hospital. Two other people are recovering this morning. Authorities say they don't believe the driver will face any charges here and that driver was not hurt. The time now is 606. The Shelbyville Shelby County Animal Shelter is continuing to offer a $15,000 reward for information leading to the arrest of the person who left a dog covered in chemical burns. We told you about Justice over the last year and his road to recovery. He was found on November the 2nd, one year ago, at an abandoned home in Shelby County. The shelter says they have received tips about who owned Justice and say the person lives in Marion County. But officials say there's not enough information to make an arrest. They say the former owner called him Roscoe. The shelter says there will be an announcement in two weeks about the reward and other information, but this morning they're still asking for tips to be called in. They say that Justice is still recovering and living with a foster family. A new facility to better serve animals in need is set to break ground in March. The Humane Society for Hamilton County is building a new shelter that it's describing as world class. It will be at the corner of 106th Street and Hague Road in Fishers. The board chairman says the organization has been out of space and resources for a decade at the current facility. The building will be home to the Humane Society and Animal Control. Time now is 6.07 and Colts fans are waking up pretty disappointed this morning. Yeah, I'm among them. The mm -hmm. team's three-game winning streak ending with a 26-24 loss to the Pittsburgh Steelers on Sunday. And it was a great game. Yeah. Adam Vinatieri missed a field goal with one minute and 11 seconds left in the game that would have given the Colts the lead. Vinatieri, whose 55-yard kick last week against the Denver Broncos, gave the Colts their third straight victory, pulled his attempt left of, of the uprights as a Colts fell out of first place in the AFC South. Indianapolis also, as you know, lost quarterback Jacoby Brissett to a knee injury in that first half. The Colts welcomed the Miami Dolphins to Lucas Oil Stadium on Sunday. No word yet if Brissett will be available for that game. Today is the first Monday in November, and according to the national calendar, it's a day to set aside time to make career changes that you've been waiting for. Our Kelsey Anderson joins us live this morning with more details. Kelsey, good morning. Well, good morning, Meredith. Yeah, so today is National Job Action Day, and that's a day to make those big career changes, have those difficult conversations with bosses that you've been waiting for. So whether it's having that difficult conversation, asking for a raise, or heading to a career fair, when you go, uh, today is a day to make those changes for yourself. So if you do go to a career fair, you, uh, you want to make sure that you are prepared. You want to wear professional clothing, bring plenty of mistake-free resumes, and a pen and paper to take notes on. Now here's a tip from career, career coach LaDawn Weston that I thought was pretty interesting. Start with the ones that are less interesting. I know that's a little backwards, but if you do that, you can practice that elevator pitch and really hone your skill there. And then by the time you get to the ones you really want to talk to, you will feel really good about what you're doing. Weston says if there is an option to pre-register for the career fair, you should take advantage of that. That way you can research the companies that will be there before you show up. Now there is a career fair happening later this week in Indianapolis. Plus tons of places are doing seasonal hiring right now. You can head over to hiringhoosiers.com for a list of all of that's going on. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. Kelsey, great information. The time now is 6.09. Uh, firefighters, they risk their lives every day, as we know, running running into building, burning buildings and performing many rescues. On top of the danger they face on a daily basis, firefighters are also more likely to lose their lives to cancer. That's why Wayne Township's first responders are receiving specialized testing today. Our Alyssa Donovan is live this morning. Alyssa, this is the first fire agency in the state to receive what could be life-saving testing. 
That's right, Meredith. This testing is very important to these firefighters, and it's done with a simple blood draw. And what this testing does is it detects early signs of cancer in the firefighter's bloodstream. There's about 150 firefighters here at Wayne Township Fire Department, and they have opted in to this testing. It's called liquid biopsy testing, and it's fairly new. It came out in 2017. Wayne Township is always looking for new ways to help keep their firefighters safe and healthy. The, fire, the first firefighter, rather, line of duty death attributed to cancer in the state was a Wayne Township firefighter back in 2013. So for the department and those who worked with that firefighter, this is a very important cause. Multiple studies have found that firefighters face a higher risk of dying from cancer than people in other lines of work. One of the reasons for that is their exposure to smoke, fumes, and other toxic agents they deal with on the job. Well, we're exposed to uh, so many more carcinogens on a daily basis than the average person. Even when we wear our air mask, those carcinogens still get in, in our gear and get absorbed by our gear and can get in our skin and absorbed by our skin. Now, the hope is that this testing can give firefighters peace of mind that they are healthy. And if the testing does detect cancer, then they can get it treated very early. Wayne Township fire officials say it's great to be the first fire department getting this testing in the state. But they hope that other departments take notice and perhaps offer this kind of testing to their firefighters in the future. Reporting live, Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Alyssa, thank you. Well, thousands of jobs are open all across the Hoosier state. Our high Hiring Hoosier's mission is to connect you to those open positions. Just ahead at 614, the cable provider looking for women to join their workforce. Todd. And Lauren, as we start the new work week here across central Indiana, you are walking out the door to pretty quiet conditions on this fall morning. Temperatures are currently sitting in the low 40s in most locations, and that's where we'll stay through the duration of the morning drive with mostly cloudy skies. There is some rain in the forecast for late in the day. More on that coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues. The time now. 612. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You and your troops. Call now at 1 800 Aspen Dental. This week, RTV6's Hiring Hoosiers is zeroing in on companies and programs actively seeking women to join their labor force. So one cable company launched an effort earlier this year, you guys probably remember this story, working to recruit more women to join a growing service technician team. RTV6's Mark Bullens shows you the strides that Comcast has made for women in the workplace. It's a tough job. But Roxana Alawar knows firsthand women are tough enough to handle it. It's never been a question of whether we can do the job or not. I think now the question is, do you want to? Roxana has been a service tech for Comcast Xfinity in Indianapolis for more than two years, installing cable and internet systems in homes and troubleshooting problems for customers. This is fine as long as they're weatherproof. And she's hoping more women respond to the call from Comcast as it looks to diversify its field operations team. We want what's in the company to reflect the people that we're actually servicing. The company spent all summer actively recruiting women to become service techs and doubled the number on staff from three to six, but it's not enough. I can't tell you how many times during a day I get the reaction of, oh, it's a girl. I think that it would be a beautiful thing to see that go away, to see, for it to be a norm. You expect a person, a person capable to go to your home, not, oh, I expect a man. It's challenging work that I think previously wasn't viewed as women's work. And I think that, you know, employees like Roxana help to uh, break that mold and say like, no, we can do it. Comcast aims to hire at least a dozen techs for its central Indiana locations over the next couple of months. No experience necessary. Classroom instruction is coupled with on the job, hands-on, on-site training. There is some heavy lifting, namely the mounted ladders on company vans, but the job focuses on customer service and interpersonal communication. The technical part is very teachable, but teaching someone how to interact with a customer is a lot harder. So uh, that's another reason why we are happy to welcome female employees to Comcast. Roxana is the only woman tech in her office, but she says she doesn't have to be. So it's not about gender, not anymore. Working for you on Indianapolis's northeast side, Mark Mullins, RTV6. So let's talk about it because we did ask about salaries for service techs at Comcast. We're told the, the pay starts at around $13 an hour and then it goes up from there. The company says 
says it offers workers a path to promotions and reimbursement for continuing education. If you're interested in applying or learning more about the positions we just talked about, we provided a link for you in this story at our website. You know it, HiringHoosiers.com. All right, it is 6.17 on your Monday morning. Everyone got that extra hour of sleep yes. today, so hopefully so they'll good. be hopping <laughs> right out of bed ready to go. Todd, what can we expect in terms of weather, though? You know, it's a decent day for us. Not the brightest day for us, but temperatures uh, not bad this morning as you walk out the door. It will be close to average later on this afternoon, but Meredith mentioned the time change. Here it is. You probably noticed it last night as it got dark a lot quicker. 717 is sunrise now. Sunset later on this evening is at 540. The temperature right now is at 42 degrees. A little bit of a breeze out of the south, and that wind will be with us throughout much of the day today. So even as we get temperatures up into the 50s later on this afternoon, it's going to feel a little bit cooler. We're at 39 in Bloomington right now with clear skies in Bedford. Your temperature is down to the freezing mark at 32, but where there's more in the way of cloud cover as you work your way to the north, temperatures this morning actually a little bit warmer, 45 in Lafayette as well as the Peru area. So as we work our way throughout the day, here's your hour by hour temperature trend. We should be at around 50 degrees already with that south wind by the time we get to 11 a.m. Our high temperature today with the time change and from this point forward is going to start to occur a little bit earlier. So it's probably right around 55 degrees at 2 o'clock, and then temperatures will start to cool off as we head into the evening hours back into the 50s. So it's not a cold day for us. Again, it's just not the brightest day. And when you combine the cloud cover and that breeze, it's going to feel just slightly cooler out there uh, compared to yesterday when it was completely sunny. So here are the clouds spilling from north to south across the area. You notice some showers in northern Indiana. Those will not impact us. There's actually a front off to our west. Uh, that doesn't really have a whole lot of moisture with it, but that's what's going to come through later on this afternoon. So the best opportunity for sunshine is this morning. The clouds will continue to thicken throughout the course of uh, the day. And by 7 o'clock, this is when we'll first have to start to watch for a few spotty showers to develop across western portions of the state. And then this front will drop across the state late tonight. So this is 1130 this evening. So again, at that point, most of you are probably uh, indoors. So as far as the shower, go. They really don't have a whole lot of an impact on our forecast here throughout the day. And the best news is by the time we get to tomorrow morning on election day, those showers are out of here. And tomorrow we do work a lot of sunshine back into this forecast. So no excuse weather-wise uh, not to go vote. Tomorrow could be just a little bit of cloud cover tomorrow morning with temperatures that'll be starting in the 30s. And then as the day wraps up, we're looking at a temperature that will top off right around 49 degrees with mostly sunny skies. So it's a beautiful day as we get into the latter half of the week. You notice the drop off in temperatures. 40s on Thursday with some rain and snow showers. Friday we get another big push of cold air. In fact, when you wake up, come Friday morning, 24 degrees. We're at 24 yeah. once again on Saturday mm -hmm. morning, which is the monumental marathon. So it's a dry start for those runners and it's dry throughout the day, but it's a cold start and eventually up to 43 degrees. Lauren. All right, Todd, thank you so much. As you're heading out in your car this Monday morning, want to give you a look at what you can see out there. It is very dark and this is a look over on on the east side of town, our Shea Good Pastures and Live Drive. And this is I-70 eastbound on the east side. No problems here, so let's take a look at our traffic now. Matt, planning out your drive, heading in from the south side as you're traveling northbound on State Road 37. It's a 12-minute drive from State Road 144 up to the ramps at I-465. No delays. At 621, let's talk about your health. It's open enrollment time, so double check and review your health care coverage plans. And that's key because the wrong coverage can cost you a lot of money. Yet, healthcare company Unum says that most workers spend less than 45 minutes reviewing their plans. Premiums have gone up this year, and so has the amount you're allowed to put in a healthcare savings account. Some plans now offer an elder care option and even pet coverage. Open enrollment generally runs until December the 15th, though some states are offering extensions. Read the fine print and good luck. A boulder weighing nearly 2,000 pounds disappears and reappears at an Arizona park. Warming up at 624 and on trending six, the questions park officials have for those who took that big round. We'll be right back. Great. On this Monday, it is time for the Trending Six, and I am buying breakfast this morning, ladies, because oh, I'm really hungry. So let's start this thing. Popeye's spicy chicken sandwich is back forever. Yes, <laughs> forever. The chain, as you may recall, ran out of inventory back in August, 
just after two weeks because of what it called extraordinary demand. It drew long lines at an Ohio location on Sunday. A spokesman for the chain says Popeyes has stabilized its supply chain for the sandwich, so lunch is on me. Don't All right. worry about it. All right. Well, coffee's on me, you guys, because pumpkin spice season it is over. That means move over pumpkin spice. <laughs> Peppermint mochas are in. Duncan is getting ready for the holiday season by bringing back this customer favorite. The coffee chain's peppermint mocha was first introduced back in 2004, but it was discontinued last year. The peppermint mocha will be added to the menu on Wednesday. And everything is on this guy because he is one of the luckiest men in the world, or at least Massachusetts. This is Rolf Rhodes. And he won a million dollars last week okay. in the state's instant jackpot game. Oh no, but that's not all. This isn't his first time. He also won a million dollars back in May of 2018. <laughs> Rhodes says since he opted for the lump sum last time, he'll go for the annuity payments this go around. Oh, you know, <laughs> how many people can say they've chosen both? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, do you want a pet rock? Okay. Oh, because someone <laughs> stole a boulder from Prescott National Forest two weeks ago. Apparently, has been returned. Talk about this thing here. This is not a rock. It's a boulder, rather large, known as the Wizard Rock. It weighs one ton. Mm. So park rangers, as you can imagine, they were befuddled as to who would have taken it and simply how does one remove that? A park officials say lots of people stopped to take pictures with the rock, so they're glad it's back. Aliens. <laughs> yes. Or maybe this guy. Yeah, well, a theme park in Japan, <laughs> it's said to have the first permanent size replica of Godzilla. In 2020, the theme park will debut a Godzilla-themed area with a 65-foot lizard, the same size as the one in the 1954 movie. If you love thrills, that might be right up your alley. Godzilla Interception Operation will allow you to zip line right into Godzilla's <laughs> mouth. All right. Well, a man who said he wouldn't shave his beard until the Nationals took the pennant is taking it off. It has been seven years since Nats superfan B.J. Truding last trimmed his Washington whiskers. Truding and his beard raised more than $1,600 online and is donating that money to the Nationals Youth Baseball Academy in the Southeast. Okay. Right. Well, Todd, a lot of people are actually going to be growing their beards since it is yeah. November, no yeah. shave November, and lucky them because it will keep them warm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's that time of year. We had a few temperatures this uh, weekend in the 20s as we started, and we have a few more in our extended forecast that'll be in the 20s for overnight lows, uh, not highs. Today, though, is not one of those days. You're walking out the temperatures uh, that are in the 40s here this morning, and we'll warm to about 52 degrees by the time we get to the noon hour. We'll have some sunshine here this morning, but ultimately, the clouds are going to win out throughout the day today. To the north, temperatures in the low 50s, right in the middle at 55 degrees in Indianapolis. High temperatures today in southern locations climb to near 60 degrees. This could be a good day to move. One of the cheapest ways to move to a new place or to move that big piece of furniture can be to rent a truck, since many are advertised at just $19 a day. Sounds great, yeah. right, Raphael? Yeah. Well, consumer reporter John Matarese is looking into some surprise mm. fees that many renters are being hit with so that you don't waste your money. Ever rent a U-Haul truck or are you thinking of renting one soon? Well, those low rates lure millions of renters. But as one man found out, hidden fees can really add up. Keith Gibson rented a U-Haul for a recent move because of that sign saying $19 a day. He took good care of it. You see the inside of the truck is clean. And returned it on time after a local move. But that $19 truck rang up at $58 in cents. Confirmation is saying that how much the truck was going to cost. And for today, and it was like close to $60. But that wasn't the worst part. He says the independent U-Haul dealer then hit him with a $25 cleaning fee. And it's not about the $25. $25, it's just, I did everything I needed to do correctly, and you still said it's incorrect. Keith said had he not taken photos, he probably would have just paid the fee and moved on. But he says his pictures specifically show that he left the inside of the truck as clean as when he rented it. I swept it out. You can see clearly it's clean. And you cleaned the back of that truck uh, out? I said I didn't even have to sweep it out. I swept it out anyway just because I wouldn't want no problem. No one was in when we stopped by the dealer. But a manager told us later by phone the cargo area was left dusty and required a cleaning. The website truthinadvertising.org says a $19 U-Haul truck can often cost triple that fee as a result of mileage fees, damage protection, environmental fees, and a cleaning fee, often ranging from $25 to $50. I said, you got to be kidding me.
A U-Haul spokesman confirms the cleaning charge, saying if additional time and efforts required to prepare the equipment for the next customer, a $25 fee may be assessed. Bottom line, don't show up with just a $20 bill for a $19 truck so you don't waste your money working for you. I'm John Maddery's Good Morning Indiana. John, thanks. For more money-saving tips and ideas, you can visit the money section of our website, theindychannel.com. Now here on Good Morning Indiana on this Monday morning, here's a look at your 630 news feed. A robbery suspect is now in critical condition after being shot by a Metro Police officer. That officer was working an off-duty job near 38th Street and Georgetown Road early Sunday morning when he heard gunshots and found a robbery victim lying in a parking lot. And then he saw someone running from the scene and he fired his gun when that person refused to stop. The suspect and the victim are both in critical condition. Uh, let me take you to Hamilton County. Three southbound lanes of I-69 near 106th Street in Fishers back open this morning after a fatal crash caused a shutdown. Fishers police say one person died and two construction workers were seriously injured when a van hit a construction truck on Sunday. The driver of that van died. That person's name has not been released yet. Two people are dead after a crash involving a horse-drawn buggy in Park County. The crash happened Saturday morning on US 36 near the Raccoon Lake Bridge. Deputies say a car hit the buggy carrying an Amish family from behind. One person died at the scene, another died at the hospital. Police say the driver of the car will not likely face charges. Taking out to Shelby County now, a shelter there, an animal shelter, still offering that $15,000 reward. That is for information on whoever left a dog covered in chemical Burns suffering in Shelby County. We told you about Justice before and his road to recovery. The shelter says they've received tips about who owned Justice and say the person lives in Marion County. But officials say there's not enough information to make an arrest. The Pacers are still missing a lot of players with injuries right now, but they managed to pick up a big win at home Sunday over the Chicago Bulls. TJ Warren led the way with 26 points and TJ Leaf had 13 points and 15 rebounds as the Pacers Pacers beat the Bulls 108 to 95. The Pacers hit the road to take on Charlotte, the Charlotte Hornets tomorrow night. And while the Pacers have a couple of TJs, all we need here on Good Morning Indiana <laughs> is TK, because TK, he has it all for us. Yes. Right? And it's Monday morning, and that's the guy we want to talk to. Yeah. yeah, you know, we're getting the work week off here to a pretty quiet start, so that's good news. Hope you all enjoyed your weekend. Mm -hmm. Hope you did as well. Had a lot of sunshine. It was a little chilly, though, at times, but overall, uh, it is November now, right? This morning, as you walk out the door, you're walking out the temperatures in the 30s to 40s. So not bad start with mostly cloudy skies and dry conditions. There will be a little bit of sunshine here this morning. So that's why I did check your sunglasses off on your morning checklist here. You definitely need the jacket. That'll basically be checked uh, going forward through the fall and now and eventually into the winter season. You do not need the umbrella this morning and your outdoor workout is good to go. It's, again, temperatures are in uh, the 30s and 40s. The clouds kind of spilling in the further south you are this morning more in the way of sunshine for you but ultimately the clouds will win out throughout the day today so as you start off your Monday temperature at 8 a.m. right around 42 degrees should be into the low 50s by the noon hour we'll talk about the rest of your Monday forecast coming up in just a few minutes Todd thank you we have our Shea good pastor out in our live drive vehicle this Monday morning showing you what you can expect as you take to the roads and here is a live look right now from the dash cam on I-70 westbound right now he's near Shadeland Avenue and you can see everything here is traveling smoothly. No crashes or issues on the east side at this hour to slow you down. Time right now, 6.33. So Hiring Hoosiers is RTV6's initiative, helping you to find and land that perfect job. And as you might know, looking for a new job or trying to get a promotion, it can be an overwhelming experience. If that's the case, today is the day designed just for you. The first Monday of November is a day set aside to make career changes that you've been waiting for. Our Kelsey Anderson is live this morning with more on why today could be the first day of the rest of your work life. Kelsey, good morning. Well, good morning. Yes, yeah, so today is National Job Action Day, and that just means taking action for yourself, for your career, whether that's having that difficult conversation with your boss, asking for a promotion, or going to a career fair. 
Really, it's preparation and follow-up that are key to a successful career fair. LaDawn Weston is a career coach at Central Nine Career Center. She says if possible, you should pre-register for the event. You definitely want to take advantage of that because before you go, it, you'll have some time to look at the organizations that are going to be participating. If you know who will be there, Weston says you'll be able to research the companies before you go and you'll feel better prepared. So you'll be able to answer some questions that are traditionally asked in an interview like, tell me what you know about our organization organization or why do you want to work here? You will have done your homework and be ready to answer that. You'll also want to make sure you have plenty of mistake free resumes. Uh, consider your tailoring your resume to specific employers. So if you've done your research and you know who's going to be there, you know uh, what they're looking for. Of course, you'll also want to bring a pen and paper and wear professional clothes. And listen up because I think this next tip from Weston is pretty interesting. Start with the ones that are less interesting. I know that's a little backwards, but if you do that, you can practice that elevator pitch and really hone your skill there. And then by the time you get to the ones you really want to talk to, you will feel really good about what you're doing. Weston says preparation and following up after the fair are the two most important things you can do. Uh, doing those things are going to enable you to have meaningful and memorable conversations at the career fair and establish good relationships. There is a career fair coming up in Indianapolis on November 7th. For information on that, plus seasonal hiring around the area, head over to HiringHoosiers.com. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. The time now is 636. Firefighters face life-threatening situations every day, all to keep you safe. Along with the physical danger they face, firefighters are also at high risk of cancer. And that's why today the Wayne Township Fire Department is giving their firefighters specialized testing. Alyssa Donovan is live in Wayne Township this morning. Alyssa, this fire department is the first in the entire state to offer this with its members. Fill us in. That's right, and it's very simple testing. It's done with a blood draw, and the International Association of Firefighters says cancer is now the leading cause of death, death rather, among firefighters. So this testing is very important, and they hope that it can potentially save lives of first responders. Now, the testing will detect early signs of cancer in the bloodstream. There are about 150 firefighters here at the Wayne Township Fire Department, and they have opted into that testing today. It's called liquid body biopsy testing and it's fairly new. It just came out in 2017. Wayne Township fire officials say they are always looking for new ways to help keep their firefighters healthy. This is a way that will allow members to have peace of mind that they're okay or give them an early indicator of cancer so that they can start getting treatment very early. Now, multiple studies have found that firefighters face a higher risk of dying from cancer than people in other lines of work. One of the reasons for that is their exposure to smoke, fumes, and other toxic agents they deal with on the job. Well, we're exposed to uh, so many more carcinogens on a daily basis than the average person. Even when we wear our air mask, those carcinogens still get in, in our gear and get absorbed by our gear and can get in our skin and absorbed by our skin. The first firefighter line of duty death attributed to cancer in the state was a Wayne Township firefighter back in 2013. So for this department and those who worked with him, this is a very important cause. Now Wayne Township is the first department to offer this kind of treatment to their firefighters and they're hoping that other departments around the state take notice and perhaps offer similar testing in the future. Reporting live, Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Alyssa, thank you. What are their plans for potholes and other issues with our roads? Up next, this election eve, we get the answers directly from the candidates for mayor. And he seems to be surging in Iowa now three months out from the presidential caucuses. The mayor of South Bend works to distinguish his campaign from those of his chief rivals. It's 639. We'll be right back. Who's Geotis is a hiring Hoosiers partner. Election day is tomorrow, and over the past week, we have been asking the candidates for mayor of Indianapolis some very important questions. We spoke to the three candidates about how they would improve the city's infrastructure. Democratic Mayor Joe Hawkset and the incumbent has proposed a plan which would take the growth of tax money from around Indianapolis and help the region's road issues. But some have been very slow to come around to that plan. 
We need to repair potholes the correct way. We need to do it in a more permanent fashion instead of a temporary patch because a temporary patch is, is again, it's only temporary. The mayor in his State of the City speech uh, pretty much demanded uh, that the cities just follow along in, in the counties outside Indianapolis. And that just doesn't work. Nearly 200,000 people get up every morning who do not live in Marion County. They drive into Marion County because that's where their jobs are. They derive income from Marion County. And when they drove, drive home at night, they take all of their local taxing, uh, uh, tax, uh, local tax uh, payments with them. We talked to each candidate about several other issues, including food insecurity, homeless prevention, and addressing the city's homicide numbers. You can find all of those discussions and their answers on our website, theindychannel.com. An early voting wrapped up on Sunday at the four Marion County satellite voting centers, but you can still cast an early vote at the county clerk's office until noon today. Again, this is a municipal election, and that means you'll be casting votes for mayor of Indianapolis if you live here, along with council races and even some school referendums. Tomorrow, the polls will be open from six 6 a.m. until 6 p.m. And if you do plan to head out to the polls tomorrow, you do want to make sure that you are prepared. So check your voter registration status, polling location, and learn a little bit more about who's on your ballot by visiting indianavoters.in.gov. We do have a link to that site on our website, theindychannel.com and the RTV6 app. Recent polls show him surging in Iowa and South Bend Mayor Pete Buttigieg is trying to keep that momentum going three months out from the nation's first presidential caucuses. The Democrat took members of the media on a three-day bus tour this past weekend with several campaign stops across the eastern part of Iowa. Buttigieg is working to contrast his health care plan from the Medicaid for All plans being pushed by two Democratic frontrunners, Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders. He told ABC's This Week he didn't think the math for Warren's plan that she released last week added up. The math is certainly controversial. Again, there are variations in the estimates in the trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. Uh, and we don't have to go there in order to deliver health care to everybody. My plan has a total cost over 10 years of $1.5 trillion. It can be fully paid for with a combination of rolling back the corporate Trump tax cut rate cut and uh, the savings we're going to get from allowing Medicare to negotiate. So it's paid for. A poll released last week has Buttigieg, Warren, and Sanders in a statistical tie for the lead among Democratic voters in Iowa. You may elect to do this. Tonight, Indianapolis Public Schools will host the first of a series of town hall meetings to get your input on the district's future. Tonight's meeting will be at 6.30 at Arsenal Tech High School. And that's on East Michigan Street. The school district and board will present the district's priorities for the next couple of years. The town hall meetings will take place at various schools through no November the 14th. Each meeting starts at 6.30. You can check IPS's website for other dates and locations. A 12-year-old boy battles cancer and a community rallies around him. Next on Good Morning Indiana, law enforcement leading the way to help a child and his family fight the cost of this terrible disease. And it's your chance to see the dance of the sugar plum fairies in person. Coming up just after the break, you're going to want to watch for the word of the day to win tickets to see the Indianapolis Ballet's The Nutcracker. Yes, The Nutcracker. But first, our top performer former Todd Clausen, give us the latest on that forecast. Yeah, Raphael, how beautiful is this sunrise that's Ooh. taking place here across central Indiana? It's a great start to our day, and we're enjoying this sunshine now with the time change over the course of the weekend. So grab those sunglasses as you take to the roadways. Temperatures are in the 40s right now. We're going into the 50s later on this afternoon. We'll talk about the rest of your Monday forecast and beyond coming up with Good Morning Indiana continues. The time now is 646. It is 648. Welcome back. I just sent out a tweet about this crash that our Shea Good Pastor is at the scene of in the downtown area near the North Split. The crash is on westbound I-70. We're told it involves about four vehicles here, and we know injuries have been reported, at least one injury here. We're going to continue to monitor this, but right now we can tell you traffic is backed up on westbound I-70 as the left lane is closed. Expect delays all the way back to Keystone Avenue. The Plainfield Police Department is raising money for a 12-year-old boy battling non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. 
Jack Moon was just diagnosed with an aggressive form of the disease in August. Orange is the color of the leukemia awareness ribbon, so the department is selling these orange Jack Moon strong window clings. They mimic the Plainfield Police Department's shoulder patch. The proceeds will go towards Jack's treatments as well as money officers raise during No Shave November. We belong to a wonderful community here in Plainfield that has really reached out and given to us. We have a lot of family and friends that live in our community. Um, obviously the Plainfield Police Department. Uh, we have a lot of folks who have really reached out and, and lended their support. So <clears throat> I would say that at any given point in time, we never felt isolated. And I think that just says a lot about the community, the community that we live in. Window clings are $5 each. You can buy them at the Plainfield Police Department headquarters on West Main Street. But Time now is 6.49 and take a look at that sunrise. It is beautiful. Uh, Todd Tossin, did you paint that yourself? Because I know <laughs> during the morning you're very artistic, you have a lot to say. I'm just wondering, you know, wow, hey, hey. I am <laughs> not that good. There is no way I could do this, but it is absolutely beautiful this morning. And it's nice to be able to show you this before uh, 8 o'clock in the morning now with the time change. As you look from IMS back east towards downtown Indianapolis. So obviously you see the sunshine. You also see some clouds. So right now in the next few hours is when you'll be able to enjoy the most sunshine here throughout the entire day. As eventually the clouds will start to win out 42 degrees a little bit of a breeze out of the south and that's something we'll have to contend with by no means is it windy throughout the day today it's just going to be a breezy day for us and that's going to make eventually our high temperatures feel a little bit cooler uh, than what they will be in the mid 50s later on this afternoon but you're walking out to 44 in Greencastle thicker clouds to the north that's why it's a little warmer in Lafayette and uh, Peru compared to Bloomington and Bedford where temperatures are in the 30s with a mainly clear sky so our dog walking forecast here features Boomer and Hoosiers, courtesy of Bonita. And she said they're all worn out from playing on the farm. So obviously they love each other uh, and they're all tired. And if you're walking your favorite four-legged friend here throughout the day today, green paws from start to finish. Temperatures starting off in the 40s here, ending in uh, the mid-50s later on this afternoon. Again, with the clouds increasing across the area. So the clearer skies are further south, thicker clouds to the north. You don't have to worry about any of these showers that you see on Storm Team 6 radar right now, but it's a front that's off to our west still that's going to come through later on this afternoon, and that is going to bring in the chance of a few spotty showers as we get into the 8 and 9 o'clock hour. So it's after sunset this evening that these showers will start to make their way through, and as they go through, they're all very, very light. In fact, it's just going to be a thin band of rain that is going to set up and move through as that front passes, and here we are at midnight. So the daytime hours today completely dry. If you're out late tonight, you may see a few of these showers. And the good news is by the time we get to election day tomorrow, maybe a little bit of lingering cloud cover in the morning, then mostly sunny skies and temperatures that will be in the 40s. So we start off in the 30s tomorrow, 40s. If you're voting later in the evening, temperatures will fall back down into the 30s. So overall, our temperatures are going to be fairly seasonable here until the end of the week. That's when a stronger cold front comes through. And so by the end of the week, we're talking about another cold blast of air as that colder air comes in on Thursday. There could be some rain and or snow showers across the area, but look at the temperature Friday morning again on Saturday morning all the way down to 24. Your high on Friday is only going to be right around 37 degrees. Todd, thanks. We do have a lot going on in the traffic department at this hour, so let's take you up here to the northeast. This is where we have a crash involving a train and a semi truck on US 36 near State Road 234. We'll keep you updated as we learn more. We're going to make some calls on this. We'll update you in the RTV app. Another issue that might slow you down if you're heading into the downtown area from the east side, westbound I-74 here right near the north split, a busy spot for the morning drive. We have a crash involving four vehicles. At least one person there is injured and the left lane is blocked for this cleanup. The backup is stretching back to Keystone Avenue. Plan ahead, of course, we'll keep you updated. If you are in the holiday spirit already, this is the giveaway for you. Right now is your chance to win a family four pack of tickets to see the Indianapolis Ballet's The Nutcracker. All you have to do for your chance to win is head to the IndieChannel.com slash Nutcracker Sweepstakes and enter today's word of the day. That is Clara. Once again, it's Clara, C-L-A-R-A. -A. If you don't win today, you're in luck. We've got plenty more words of the day all week long. Good luck. Visit the Hiring Hoosiers job board. 
Well, everyone who lived through the 1980s, maybe this guy knows this song. It's now an enduring pop music classic. And if you're like this guy, you can't get enough of AHA, uh -huh, and you'll want to subscribe to their YouTube channel soon. I'm only 25, but first, you guys, we have to sing the song. Right? Maybe not. Here's the song. <laughs> So AHA has debuted a new documentary series on its YouTube channel chronicling the story and the legacy of the song Take On Me. That first episode is live now with parts two and three to follow in the coming weeks. And maybe I heard that song once before. I'm not sure. <laughs> I, heard it. Uh -oh, I know I'm not hitting the high notes, so that's going to be one of, one of you guys. <laughs> so. All right, starting the day off with a little bit of sunshine here, but the clouds win out today with temperatures that'll be in the 50s. Election day should be nice tomorrow with lots of sunshine. Dodd, thanks, and thank you for joining us. We're back in 25 minutes and all throughout Good Morning America. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you tomorrow.